What Hats. is going on? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another very special edition of the Burnout Writer Podcast, focused all about PAX. PAX East is online this year because of everything that's going on in the world, but we're getting to see a bunch of cool games, talk to some amazing developers, and Destiny, we just yeah. got to check out a game that got me incredibly hyped. What did we just see? War Tales. I'm saying it like all nice, but actually this game is pretty gritty and realistic. War like, Tales. Oh, much better. War Tales. No, War I can't. Tales. I can't get that deep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we got to see War Tales coming from Shiro Games, one of Destiny's favorite developers who have put out stuff like Evo Land and a bunch of other cool stuff. We got to see a bunch of the demo, which is also available on Steam right now if you want to go check it out. War Wish Tales. Wishlist it wishlist it war tales is a strategy tactical rpg where you're going to be roaming around a giant world um you know you're going to have your different characters if you've seen something like fire emblem this follows the same vein in terms of combat but with a big open world a lot of player choice and a lot of interaction destiny what do you think of what we saw from war tales man okay so honestly like my my feel of the game is like they want to put you basically in a world where like a bunch of shit has happened. That sounds terrible the way I'm explaining it, but it's not like a fantasy themed uh, game. Like you're not going to mm -hmm. be fighting like a bunch of elves and like dragons, dragons and like there's no magic. Like this is gritty rogue like like shit happen and you're just trying to survive, right? Yeah. Uh, you're trying to like live through this world where like it's been decimated by this plague. It really, it feels like they were like, let's take some stuff from like European history and mm -hmm. like make a game about it. That's really what it feels like. And I love period pieces when it comes to movies and books. So this game is right up my alley and I'm <clears throat> very excited about playing it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just surprised. I, I jumped into the demo earlier today with how system like systemically deep it is. There are so much going on. Like you have each character, you're able to spec them how you want in different ways. You'll be able to recruit other characters to be able to kind of join your party. The, there is no job system. Everything is based around the weapons and your stats. So you're able to kind of build your party the way that you want them. But there is a lot going on here and they're very focused on making it accessible. For example, when you're uh, upgrading your characters, when you when they level up, you, they actually show you which skills will be affected by which attributes. So for example- That was really cool. Like, especially for somebody who's not used to playing tactical games. Yeah. Uh, because as you know, um, I got into my first tactical game uh, a couple of weeks ago and mm -hmm. I felt a little overwhelmed with knowing like just putting stats in places because I think it looked good but like mm -hmm. this was really cool like you actually see what your stats are doing like it like pops up with that and um I just I I love the fact that it's accessible like they talked about like you can play iron mode which is like you're just going to get massacred mm -hmm. and then there are easier modes to play so this this seems very like new um gamer friendly it does seem like that. Like they're they're going very far to make it accessible for anybody who's new to the genre while also just streamlining things in a way that seems to make sense. They have gone ahead and said that like the world itself is handcrafted. Currently in the demo, there is about half a zone and they anticipate by the end of the full release, there's going to be 10 full zones with like massive. early- Massive. Massive. They're, they're tracking for early access, for an early access release at the end of this year with the full game coming about a, a year later. Um, the fights and the contracts, which are some of the different missions you'll be doing in the game, are procedurally generated to an extent. So there's a lot to see and there's a lot of different things that will change and that will happen. Um, something that really, really got to me, Destiny, is the survival elements of this game. And I know you're a pretty big fan when it comes to survival games. So tell me a little bit about the survival elements. So, like... Basically, you're taking care of yourself and your team, right? You need mm -hmm. to make sure they're fed. You need to make sure that they're getting paid because they have a emotion meter, basically. Like, if they're not happy, they might ditch you. Hell, mm -hmm. I don't even know. They might even try to kill you if you don't pay them on time. But I, I do love survival aspects because it gives, like, a feel of realism to the game. Like, you're not just, like walking through the game and you're never hungry or never yeah. have to use the bathroom or anything like that. And um, one of the things that is not in the demo, but they explained is cannibalism, which I mean, like, obviously I don't support cannibalism, but like in the game and in the but world, it makes sense. If you're hungry, you might have to eat a toe 
or a finger or something. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not promoting that, but in the game, it's okay. And so I thought that was really interesting, too, because, like, that definitely affects, like, the entire world. And it makes sense to have those kind of mechanics in a game like mm -hmm. that. I think the biggest takeaway for me is how much they're focusing just on player choice. Like, it's not just, like, this is what you have and this is all it is. Depending on the choices that you make, like he talked about, there's a uh, a war ravaged area. And when you go there, there will be refugees trying to flee. You can either help the refugees. Uh, they might not have a lot of money, so you can try to help them for free or take what they have. Or you could also go to like the bandit faction leader in that area and work with them to rob them. And then you get a cut. Like you are able to change the characters and the different choices that you make will impact your abilities and different skills that you can get. And it really changes depending on how you want to play. Like they're really giving you, they, he talked a lot about like, there is a story and there is going to be an, an, an end game. There is, there's a lot that's going on, but the biggest focus is surviving and getting paid, which like you can kind of style that game. Do you want to be a good guy and help people? Do you want to be a bandit and steal from people? It gives you a lot of room to make the game what you want it to But be. even on that, he actually brought up a specific choice that you have where he was talking about a guy whose like entire um, kind of band had been decimated mm -hmm. and you can choose to either have that person on your team and go after the guy who killed him or you could like just kill him. But there's little twists and these decisions aren't easy to make. It's not like I'm just gonna help this guy. Like yeah. the reason why his whole team was murdered is because he was off raping and pillaging the other guy's team. So yeah. um, I thought that was really interesting. Like, because I thought it was going to be like, oh, like I'm just gonna help everybody because that's usually the kind of, I'm usually like chaotic good in games, mm -hmm. but you can't be really good in this game like yeah. all of these choices like there are there are basically reactions and consequences to it so let's say that you do take on that guy whose like whole band has been like um decimated obviously he's not going to tell you the reason why it's been decimated he's going to mm -hmm. play the victim so and then if you run into the other guy and he sees that you have that guy on your party he's going to attack you immediately yeah and, and just i just like... thought that was really clever it is. And like, if you run into the second guy first, then he can join your team and vice versa. So like, they're yeah. giving you a lot of room to play the game that you want to play. And that's something that's really, really cool. Um, they talked about how like, it's basically like a Merc simulator. Like, how do you survive and live in this world that's been decimated by this plague as you try and learn more about what's going on? The game, you can kind of play it in whatever order you want. There isn't like a lot of there, there, are, there will be quests and stuff for you to do, but like you can also like almost like Breath of the Wild style, just go that way and see what happens. The game kind of leaves that up to you. Um, very and I, open world. Very, very much so. I'm really, really excited about it. Um, like you have to manage their money, you have to manage their food. I played the demo. I went ahead and spent all my money on a horse instead of paying <laughs> my people, and then they started getting upset with me, which again will have lasting consequences. Makes in the sense game. though. You can't go like buy a new car and not pay your employees. That's basically what you did. I, but like yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Another really cool thing is that there is not like a main antagonist really, even though mm -hmm. there's an end game. So I'm really interested in seeing like how they kind of do that. If there's an end yeah. game, it automatically makes me think, oh, there's some big badass dude who's like making all this shit happen. Yeah. Um, but there's not a main antagonist. And I guess you could say this game is more like um, man versus nature because it, it is the plague. Man versus nature, man versus man. Yeah. Um, but there were alludes to like a beast in the forest. So yeah, yeah. there's yeah. there's there is a lot going on in this game, and it's, it's like we said, it will be coming out at the end of the year. Knock on wood, as long as everything continues to go well in early access with a full release a year later. Uh, the last thing that I want to quickly touch on before we go is that there's also like this system that I found really interesting, where it's like a morale system in a fight. If you get mm. to a certain percentage in a fight, then you'll have some, a reaction called galvanized, where your crew will uh, do more damage. And they'll be, you know, they'll be better off. And then, which you kind of level that up by killing people and, and being doing well in the fight. And if you reach 100% in that in that meter, then the enemy team can actually run away and you'll get almost like an auto win. And you basically have a choice. Do you let them flee or do you go after them and kill them? And like, there's just so much going on in this game, Destiny. You can't be like, throwing hands and then run away. Like, you, exactly. You, you come talking mess. Don't, don't start none, won't be none. Yeah. Basically. 
And like they were talking about how like the contracts, if you do a lot of contracts and become like a headhunter, you'll start unlocking new abilities that can, you know, do you craft a net so you can catch other people better? Do you start being able to run faster? Like it's just so cool, Destiny. There's so yeah, much happening I'm in this game. I'm pretty excited. I want to build an army. I know that's really hard, but you do have the ability to build like an 80 person army and just like go wreak havoc on yeah. shit. So. As long as you can feed them and as long as you can pay them, the game kind of As long as you're not buying cars too. when they're supposed to be getting paid. Yeah, I'm just going to buy an army of horses. <laughs> uh, but Destiny, what should people do with this game again? Can you tell me real quick before we close out? Guys, it's on Steam. You got to mm -hmm. go wishlist it because like I said before in all of our videos, the algorithm is set up so that Steam knows that this game is being talked about and people are interested in it and it really helps the developers. Please go wishlist it. And while you're at it, go check out some of their other games because all of them are different and I mm -hmm. love that like most uh game companies kind of have this little niche but like they are doing like Evil Land is like an RPG and this game is like completely different style look gameplay so please go check out Shiro Games wish list mm -hmm. their stuff try the demo it's free exactly you ain't got nothing to lose Go check it out and keep it locked here. We're going to have much more PAX content coming for you very, very soon. More reviews. And our 100th episode is coming up with a bunch of giveaways. And guests, so get Guys, ready. the 100th video, like we have sponsors, Ubisoft, Freedom Games, like so much coming at you. So please like, subscribe. Do that and keep it locked. We'll see you on the next one. Deuces. Peace out.